SpaceX Starlink, 4.6 million users. Can the center hold? Let's get into it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time today. We have a little bit of misty morning and that is it. Zing behind that misty morning is so good. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a technology day. We're gonna be talking about SpaceX Starlink a little bit. I was reading so many articles and I don't know if you guys are seeing the exact same thing. There is so much negativity around SpaceX Starlink and Elon Musk and basically anything that Elon Musk does. He's definitely polarizing. You either love him or you hate him. That seems to be like the consensus. There's so many people that used to love him like five, six years ago that absolutely hate him now because he lined with the president and all this kind of stuff. You know, people get all just bent out of shape about this stuff and they talk down on the product based on it instead of using facts. So I wanna read some of the key points of these articles to you and then maybe debunk some of the facts that are in them. And then I wanna hear from you, what do you think about all of this? I'll give you my commentary and give you the future as I see it for SpaceX Starlink. I could be right, I could be wrong. I've been right a lot over the last 40 plus months. So we'll see what ends up happening with this video. Am I gonna be right or wrong? I don't know. <laughs> so before we jump into this, I wanna say that if you enjoy the content, throw it a thumbs up, that'll be very helpful. Don't forget to subscribe. If you are, thank you, I appreciate that. Click the notification button over here so I go live when a new video comes out. You'll be notified of it immediately. And if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks, check them out too, they're free. Go to jchristina.com forward slash books. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash books. And if you wanna give back to the channel, say thank you. There's a little thank you button down there. Give a dollar or two if you like. If not, it's perfectly fine. The video is still free. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. And finally, if you want more SpaceX Starlink content, I've put together over 420 videos just for you over the last 42 plus months. I'll put a link over here. As I always say, don't click on it yet. When you're done watching this video, click there and you will see a whole bunch of helpful how-tos, tips, tricks, what to do, what not to do, what to buy, what not to buy, and of course the why behind all of it because this channel has always been about the why and will remain about the why. The how is important, but the why is more important in my personal opinion. Anyways, the article starts out by saying Starlink skyrocketing rise, 4.6 million users and counting. SpaceX Starlink is revolutionizing internet access across the globe. In 2024, it doubled its subscriber count to 4.6 million, up from 2.3 million, which was confirmed during an end of year report. That includes 1.4 million in the US, where rural communities long overlooked by traditional broadband now rely on its service. This swift descent showcases SpaceX Starlink's potential to connect the unconnected, but with some such rapid expansion, can it keep its momentum without faltering? Low orbit, high stakes, the tech behind the boom. SpaceX Starlink's advantage stems from its network of over 6,700 satellites orbiting 342 miles above Earth, far closer than the 22,000 miles geostationary satellites used by rival satellite companies like HughesNet and Viasat. This setup delivers an average of 40 to 50 milliseconds latency and 100 to 200 megabits download speed according to Ookla's 2024 test. Social media buzzes with reports of 10,000 new user signups daily. Yet, in crowded regions like Seattle and Austin, users face peak hour slowdowns and wait lists emerged last November, hinting at strains within the system. The numbers speak, growth meets gridlock. The numbers weave a striking tale. December 31st, 2024, SpaceX revealed Starlink added 2.6 million subscribers, fueled by 89 launches. Revenue might even soar to $7.7 .7 billion in 2025, up from $1.4 billion in 2022. With typical speeds of 100 to 120 megabits down and 5 to 15 megabits up, it often meets the FCC's 100 megabit down goal for broadband rule access, but falls short on the 20 megabit upload mark. Elon Musk dismisses performance doubts as, quote, 
utterly false. Yet, many have noted capacity strain in peak hours. A new $100 fee in congested areas has sparked question about Starlink's rapid growth versus its sustainability. Beyond the Stars, Policy and Promise SpaceX Starlink's reach extends beyond tech into geopolitics. Vietnam recently approved its service, tapping a market of over 100 million potential users. Italy is crafting a rival satellite system, kind of like China, while Ontario's premier Doug Ford briefly paused, then restored a $68 million SpaceX Starlink deal after U.S. tariffs were eased for 30 days. Some dream of 30,000 satellites closing the digital device Provide. Others, including 100 scientists in a recent FCC filing, warned of orbit overcrowding. The implications ripple outward, blending promise with mounting challenges. The Human Edge – Connection vs. Control SpaceX Starlink's heart beats for the people it serves. Edward Walker, a retiree out of Washington, said, quote, Folks buy homes expecting internet and find none. Starlink's a lifeline. Since February 10th, Starlink's beta test direct-to-sell service using T-Mobile has users texting from open fields, no towers in sight. With 27 new markets added in 2024, it stretches to 2.8 billion potential users, reweaving the fabric of connection. Analyst Joe Supin asked, quote, can Starlink scale without crumbling? Voices online hum with doubt. Can Starlink stand the surge? As satellites thicken, the skies, access strains against overload, a tug of war charting its course ahead. So as you can see here, many of these articles are very dramatic and very negative towards what is going on with SpaceX Starlink, calling out a lot of the issues in comparison to all of the things that has been doing well. So seeing that they speak about the FCC, if you guys didn't know it, the FCC was going to provide or give permission for the government to provide almost a billion dollars. It was like $980 million or something to SpaceX Starlink to help bridge the digital divide, basically providing high speed internet in rural areas, the bridging of the digital divide. This grant for nearly a billion dollars for SpaceX Starlink ended up not being approved because the FCC stated that they didn't believe that SpaceX Starlink would be able to provide service of 100 megabits down and 20 megabits up. They didn't believe that this was going to be able to happen within the course of two years, which is absolutely ludicrous, okay? But this is what they do. All right, so SpaceX Starlink lost that billion dollars. Well, this has been happening right across the board. There's been a lot of push going on when it comes to SpaceX Starlink, when it comes to the FCC, the FAA, Fish and Wildlife, all kinds of agencies have been giving them a hard time. Now, when we read these articles, like I said, they have this undertone or this feel that it is negative. They don't look at, there is 4.6 million customers. That's in like four years. You're talking a doubling just from last year, from 2.3 million to 4.6 million, a doubling. They don't get into how amazing that is. They look into the problems that that can cause, right? And then they look into the possibility of maybe a satellite falling out of the sky and landing on someone's head. And then they question such things as the ozone layer being depleted because of these satellites and on and on and on, as we can hear in this article alone. So let's just kind of break this down a little bit. Number one, the speeds are not going to be a problem. All right. They will not be a problem. The latency will also go down to sub 20 milliseconds within the next year. Okay. Mark my words, write it down on a piece of paper. You can come back to me and tell me if I was wrong or right. Okay. I'm right. I promise you. The reason why I say that is not because of the current system will be able to handle it. The reason I say that is because when Starship actually gets up there and starts launching out all of those version three satellites, kind of like a Pez dispenser, those version three satellites have 10 times the capacity of the current satellites and they're four times the size. That's why they need the Starship to be able to do it because it's bigger. The Falcon 9 won't be able to handle that. It's just simply too big. So this being said, 
Even though the version 2.0 minis are doing an amazing job, they're connecting 4.6 million customers, these new satellites are going to change everything. Once again, 10 times the capacity. This translates into every one SpaceX Starlink version 3 satellite is the equivalent to 10 of the current satellites. So when they launch 100 new satellites, that is the equivalent to 1,000 new satellites. You see what I'm saying? So this is going to happen this year. Before to the end of this year, I promise you, you're going to see version 3 satellites on orbit. Absolutely, 100%. So that being the case, at that point, that's when everything is just simply going to change. Everything is going to get faster, lower latency, and there's going to be next to no congestion. The reason being 10 times the capacity. That's it. Very, very simple. So when you have certain cities that they highlighted like Austin and whatnot, yes, there is certain areas where there's high levels of congestion because there's a lot of people in those areas using the satellites that are coming by at 17,000 miles per hour overhead. So there's a lot of people using them. Hence, there's a lot of congestion. But if you think about it, if that one satellite was instead of a version 2 mini, it was a 3.0, it would be able to handle 10 times the number of people. Do you think there'll be congestion? No. Just what has happened after Elon Musk got aligned with the president is just horrific, in my personal opinion. You either you like him or you hate him. The gray area, once again, is kind of not there. It's just craziness to me because so many of the people that absolutely hate him today loved him for his greenness with Tesla and everything else just four or five years ago. Horrific, in my personal opinion. Anyways, what say you? What do you think? What do you think will be the outcome with SpaceX Starlink? Do you think that it can hold the center or not? I think it can. I think that the balance is going to be there, especially when we see those version threes on orbit. What say you? Down below, I want to hear from you. Once again, if you don't want to put anything down there, put an emoji. That will be very helpful. At least I knew that you got to the end of this video. Finally. Head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all my photography tools and my merchandise and my tees and my shirts and my books and everything else. Head over to jchristina.com, see if there's something there that you like. And if there is, please pick it up and help support me and my family. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay connected, maybe with SpaceX Starlink. And we'll see you in the next one. Love you all.